Hey everyone, Mitch coming in for the Khmer Score Studio. Welcome to the show. So, really quick, you can see my most recent episode on Blade Coil Serpent. Well, make sure you check that episode out. And no, that emoji is not part of the art. Um, yeah, uh, that's just my reaction to this card. And, and I think very much it should be on the art, apparently. But don't leave just yet, because on this episode... Wait, this is real? And now you know the drill. Blame it in the comments below. And with all that said, let's jump into it. First off, a big thank you to MTG Goldfish for the translated version of this card. And actually, with that translated version kind of confirming, you know, the translation on Reddit essentially, yeah, I, I actually, I didn't believe that the initial translation was real for this card until I saw this and yeah, oh my goodness. Um, I, I thought there, there was a, a slight change on it uh, that was probably gonna be made. No, uh, this is the card, so let's read it real quick. A 7-6 Worm Trample that costs four red and a green, and it says, whenever a land enters the battlefield, create a tapped Power Stone token. And of course, again, a Power Stone token is an artifact that has tap at colorless. This mana can't be spent to cast on artifact spells. So yeah, there is one word that I thought, uh, or I mean, I guess a couple of words in there that I thought were omitted essentially from the Reddit translation. Because it does say whenever a land enters the battlefield, it does not say whenever a land you control enters the battlefield, which would still be a very, very, very powerful effect, a very good card. But yeah, this counts your opponent's lands as well. And in a format like Commander, obviously, yeah, with three opponents and with players who love getting lands out, you know, all those green players out there, including yourself, obviously, if you're playing this card, there are plenty of green players that love to ramp, love to get lands into play. And of course, there are, you know, fetch lands as well to consider. There are going to be a ton of lands coming to play throughout the game, and every single time one does, no matter who controls that land, you get a Power Stone token. You get an artifact. You essentially ramp. Now, that kind of ramp, again, is specific in what you can utilize that mana for. Again, non-artifact spells cannot be cast with mana with this. That being said, yeah, you can still obviously cast well artifacts and you also can activate abilities and there are plenty of commanders out there and plenty of fantastic cards out there that have some fantastic abilities that you would love to just be able to dump a ton of mana into. On top of that, just having a glut of artifacts in play can be a massive benefit as well and we'll talk about some cards that can really benefit from that. So yeah, I mean, the ability to make an absurd amount of essentially, you know, very specific again mana rocks is pretty crazy and you can do some really crazy things with that and with this and again yeah i definitely thought the initial translated version on reddit just had to be just slightly off again it had to just miss the you know whenever a land you control the you control just had to be missed right but no this counts everyone so yeah with one trip around the table if everyone's just hitting their land drops just hitting their land drops at a minimum you are getting four power stone tokens now again those come to play tap, but still, when you can untap those, good luck. And again, that four is probably a minimum. Um, yeah, again, because obviously players can, you know, cast ramp spells. They can, you know, crack fetch lands, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And if you were in these colors, obviously, you're going to be heavily incentivized to do that as well. So now with all that said, let's talk about some cards that work very well with this. And let's talk about some commanders that are most definitely going to want to consider this mythic card. First up, yeah, I mean, when we're talking about cards that work well with it, um, yeah, uh, fetch lands and ramp spells, like I mentioned already. I mean, Evolving Wilds, even this simple card that I absolutely love and sees play an absurd amount of decks out there. Tap, sacrifice, get a basic land card, put in play, tapped. This is going to get you two Power Stone tokens. This is essentially, again, like, hey, create two Mana Rocks. Again, yes, specific Mana Rocks, and I will quick, uh, you know, keep harping on that because, yeah, you can't utilize them for, you know, the normal other spells outside of, you know, artifacts and, you know, utilizing on mana for your abilities. But still, if you are including this card in the deck, you are going to have plenty of outlets for that incredible amount of mana, again, that you can generate with this great worm. And again, that's just from just playing a simple land like Evolving Wilds, which you're probably going to play in the deck. I mean, of course, there's other fetch lands, like, you know, the expensive ones, like, you know, um, uh, Misty Rainforest. Yeah. Uh, also, you know, the new Capenna lands, too, that just sacrifice and go get it. Myriad Landscape. Blighted Woodland, there's plenty of lands that can go get other lands, so 
yeah, have fun with that. And of course, there's plenty of ramp spells that are very effective in Commander, because yeah, land ramp is probably the safest and most effective way to ramp. Rampant growth. Search library, base land, get into play, tap, then shuffle. Plenty of other great ramp spells, especially in green, of course. I mean, Wayfarer's Bobble. I should have brought Wayfarer's Bobble. What am I doing? My goodness, it's early in the day. But yeah, Wayfarer's Bobble. Basically, you know, also gets you a, you know, again, a Power Stone, a Mana Rock in a way. And of course, you know, if you've got a deck that wants to have everyone ramp in a certain way, you know, maybe a card like New Frontiers or, you know, one of those Tempt cards, essentially. New Frontiers says each player may search their library for X basic land cards, put them play tap. That can be an absurd amount. Again, let's say you put up five into that X, okay? You spend six mana in total on this spell. Everyone go get five basic lands. That is going to be 20 power stones that you get into play because of that. So again, including your opponents on this card again, and something I definitely did not expect. And again, I, I was like, yeah, okay, yeah, the real translation will come out. You know, it's actually just going to, you know, ensure that this does not say just whenever any land comes into play, but it is. So yeah, you can do some pretty bonkers things with this. And I just said bonkers. It's early. Need more coffee anyways. Now, of course, you can't utilize those Power Stones right away because they do come into play tap. But yeah, I mean, if you are already running a card like, you know, Amulet of Vigor, which, you know, can be very effective in certain decks out there. It says whenever a permanent enters the battlefield, tapped under, under your control, untap it. So yeah, obviously this can help, you know, with something like, you know, Evolving Wilds, getting you a basic land into play tapped. It'll untap that. But of course, it's also going to untap all those Power Stones when they come into play. So essentially... Yeah, you can just utilize them right away if you've got an outlet for it, that mana. Again, yeah, if you're going to be casting an artifact on your turn, great. You can get some extra free mana for that, essentially. Or again, if you've got abilities you want to activate, you can do that as well. So yeah, if your deck is running Amulet Vigor and it can utilize this card, um, yeah, you can do some pretty crazy things. But speaking of crazy things, I mean, there are other uses for these Power Stones as well, like I mentioned. I mean, let's talk about a card like Gearport Aether Grit. It's an enchantment that says tap to untap artifacts you control. Gear Poor Aether Grid deals one damage to our creature or player. This is a crazy ping effect for decks that can make a ton of artifacts. And yeah, again, this Great Worm on its own can make you an absurd amount of Power Stones. So even if you're not utilizing its mana, you know, their mana for anything, essentially, you can just tap two of them, ping something for one. Again, either a creature or a player, so you can take out a ton of creatures. And yeah, take out a ton of players, too, with this throughout the game. Again... If you've got 20 of those Power Stones just lying around, that's 10 damage wherever you want it and wherever you want to distribute it to. Or how about a card like Sahili's Directive, a sorcery for X, red, 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 and it has Improvise, so each artifact you tap after you're done activating mana abilities pays for one. So you don't... I mean, you, you normally couldn't actually cast this card with your Power Stones, right? Because it's a sorcery, it's not an artifact spell. But that doesn't matter when it has Improvise because you're just tapping them for that Improvise. So in a way, Improvise is kind of like a way to get around that restriction. And yeah, this is a very powerful effect. Reveal the top X cards of your library. You may put any number of artifact cards with converted mana costs extra less from among them on the battlefield. Then put all cards built this way that weren't put on the battlefield into your graveyard. Basically, yeah, go get a ton of things off the top of your library, but then play for free. Good luck. Speaking of good luck, well, for your opponents, um, Hellkite Igniter, yeah, this can easily be game over with Power Stones in play for a lot of reasons. 5-5 five, five, Flying Haste Dragon, pay one in a red, it's going to get plus X plus zero until I turn X, the number of artifacts you control. So yeah, let's just say you've got 10 Power Stones in play, and, and yeah, you can easily get a lot more than that. First up, obviously those Power Stones can be utilized for that one generic mana in this activation cost, so... Sure, let's say that you've got, you know, four red mana lying around. Uh, yeah, let's tap four of those Power Stones. Let's tap that four red mana. And let's give our Hellkite Igniter plus 40, plus zero until end of turn. Flying hastily, swinging at an opponent for 45 damage. Yeah, again, these kinds of cards that care about the number of artifacts that you control can obviously be incredible when you can very easily flood the board with something like this Great Worm. Speaking of caring about the number of artifacts you control, um, yes, Blink Moth Urn. If your deck loves Blink Moth Urn, it is going to love this Great Worm. At the beginning of each player's pre-combat main phase, the Blink Moth Urn is untapped. That player adds colors for each artifact they control. If you have this Great Worm in play, I can pretty much guarantee you that you're going to get the most value out of this. And also, we'll talk about Clock of Omens here in a bit, but yeah, in combination with that, you're definitely going to get the most value out of it. But yeah, Blink Moth Urn can essentially make you an absurd amount of mana because your Power Stones are in play. And again, you can utilize that mana for whatever you want. You aren't limited to just, you know, artifact spells or, you know, activate abilities with that. 
the mana that Blink Moth Urn generates, you can just utilize however you wish. And of course, yeah, I mean, you can utilize the Power Stones for other things too. So they're basically doubling up on that mana for certain things. And speaking of utilizing your Power Stones, I mean, Clock of Omens can also help out. Tap two untapped artifacts you control, untap target artifact. So even if you don't have anything to utilize your Power Stone mana for at the time, well, if you have, you know, let's just say even just one, one mana rock in play, let's just say you have an Arcane Signet in play, okay? You essentially can just keep tapping two of your Power Stones for one mana of any color because you can tap two of them to untap your Signet, to tap it, to tap two of them, to untap your Signet, to tap it. Basically, each of those Power Stones is now counted as half a mana rock, and yeah, if I could get half a mana rock every single time a land came into play under anyone's control, that would be an incredibly powerful thing. And yeah, that's exactly what you can do. And of course, this gets even better if you've got, say, you know, like a Gilded Lotus or something that can have for even more mana in play. That gets even more ridiculous. So yeah, there's a lot of ways to utilize these Power Stones. Again, even though they do seem that they're pretty limited because they can't, you know, cast, you know, normal spells outside of, you know, artifact spells, you can still do a ton with them. You can really take advantage of them and really do some very, very incredible things, of course, on top of casting a ton of artifacts and on top of activating a lot of abilities. And speaking of crazy things that you can do with it, um, yeah, okay, I, I kind of just thought of this this morning and I just need to bring it up because, well, I mean, something that you can do, probably no one ever will do, but I'll be impressed when someone does do it. Um, yeah, let's uh, play Life and Limb, which says all forests and all saplings are 1-1 one -one green sapling creatures in forest lands in addition to their types. They're affected by summoning sickness. Now, what exactly does this have to do with anything? Well, um, well, let's keep going, because Masquid Nexus is next. Which says, creatures you control are every creature type. The same is true for creatures, spells you control, and creature cards you own that aren't on the battlefield. Now, what does that have to do with anything? Well, not, not yet, uh, until we actually talk about March of Machines. Now, now is when it makes sense. Each non-creature artifact is an artifact creature with power toughness, each equal to its converted mana cost. So now our Power Stones are creatures, thanks to March of the Machines. Uh, Masquid Nexus is going to have them become saplings as well. And Life of Limb says, no, these are 1-1 uh, forest lands. So now your lands make, uh, you know, Power Stones, which are also lands, which make more Power Stones, which are also lands, which makes more Power Stones, which are also lands. And you see where this is going. Now, this actually is an infinite loop that you cannot stop uh, if you don't have, you know, a way to actually stop it or, you know, win from it with, like, you know, a Perforos or, you know, like an Impact Tremors. Uh, but yeah, I just thought this was kind of off the wall and uh, weird, but fun. And yeah, I just thought I'd bring it up. But yeah, there are some crazy things that you can do with a creature that says, hey, whenever lands come into play, let's make an artifact that you can utilize. Now, when it comes to commanders that might want to utilize this very exciting card, one of the first ones that came to my mind was Jensen Carthalian Druid Exile. It says, whenever you cast a multicolored spell, scry one that spells all colors, create a 4 4 white angel creature with flying and vigilance, and by paying five, you can tap for Wooberg. So, yeah, this spell is multicolored, so we do get to scry one. It is not all colors, so we don't get to make that angel, but it does have an activated ability that we can definitely utilize those Power Stone tokens for. Essentially, once we've made five Power Stone tokens, which again is going to take absolutely no time, and we can probably just do that, we you know, with one trip around the table with everyone playing a land and us playing a land too, you know, and maybe someone ramping or cracking Evolving Wilds. Regardless, we can utilize those Power Stone tokens to activate that ability and essentially kind of filter our mana into this commander with those Power Stones to tap and add Wooberg. So basically, yeah, five of our Power Stones equal Wooberg. So, yeah, in that way, they can ramp us, and yeah, of course, there are going to be other activated abilities or other, you know, artifacts that we can utilize with them as well. But yeah, just an example of how certain commanders can definitely benefit from having a ton of Power Stones in play. Speaking of which, how about Spella Ice Shaper, which has pay three, tap, create a colorless snow artifact token named Icy Manolith, with tap, add one mana of any color. And by paying six red green, we can tap to look at the top four cards of our library. We can cast a spell from among them without paying its mana cost with the rest of the bottom of our library in a random order. So this commander has some great activated abilities. I mean, let's say we have even just three power stones in play, which of course is very easy for us to get to. We can just start utilizing those power stones to start making icy mana lifts. And essentially, again, kind of in a way, filtering our mana, you know, making some, you know, actual mana rocks that can kind of just stick around and be utilized for anything. So in a way, making a more, you know, permanent source of mana for other spells. And also, yeah, that second activated ability can be very powerful as well. So we can utilize, you know, six power stones for that one to activate that and to be able to, you know, just get a card at the top of our library for free. 
And of course, with a spell deck, yeah, there are plenty of ways to untap this commander and do it again. So yeah, the more and more power stones we make, the more and more times we can activate these fantastic abilities. Speaking of fantastic abilities, a commander that is definitely going to want to consider this great worm is the Shatter Gang Brothers. It has paid two in a black, sacrifice a creature, each other player sacrifices a creature, then for two in a red does the exact same thing for artifacts, and for two in a green does the exact same thing for enchantments. So, yeah, again, that two mana in each of these activations can definitely be utilized with all of our power stones. And again, we can make a vast number of power stones, especially, you know, when we utilize cards we already want to, you know, like ramping, you know, and also like, you know, evolving wilds and those kinds of cards. So, yeah, make a bunch of power stones, utilize those abilities, especially that ability to sacrifice artifacts. I mean, basically, this is just going to be at a certain point, hey, pay a red, because, you know, two mana from power stones and you've got a, just a, an enormous amount of them. Pay red mana, sacrifice a power stone that you already utilize. Um, every opponent sacrifices an artifact. Opponents are not going to be able to keep any artifacts in play once you're set up properly with this commander and the Great Worm. So, yeah, it can have an incredible impact. And, of course, again, just pay for those other two abilities, too, except for, you know, the black and the green mana. So, utilize your creatures, utilize your enchantments, wipe your opponent's boards again and again and again. Yeah, this Great Worm can lead to some very brutal things. Speaking of brutal, I mean, Zakama Primal Calamity, yeah, here we go. 9-9, nine, nine, Vigilance Reach Trample. When it enters the battlefield, if you cast it, untap all lands you control. By paying 2 in a red, it's going to deal 3 damage to our creature. By paying 2 in a green, destroy target artifact or enchantment. By paying 2 in a white, you gain 3 life. So, Zakama's got you covered when it comes to mana in one way by untapping your lands, but now you get even more mana again with all your power stones in play, so you can utilize that for that generic mana on each of these activations. You can just, you know, again, use a glut of mana to activate these abilities an absurd amount of times to take out a ton of creatures, take out probably all your opponent's artifacts and enchantments, and gain life, sure, if you really want to. So yeah, depending on how the Zakama deck is built, I mean, as long as it's not like, you know, Dinosaur Tribal specifically, definitely might want to consider this brand new exciting card. Another commander with a lot of activations and a lot of very powerful activations, Kenrith Return King, yeah, uh, can make a lot out of this card. Kenny has pay a red, all creatures gain triple and haste as well turn, pay one in a green, put a counter on target creature, pay two in a white, target player gains five life, pay three in a blue, target player draws a card, pay four in a black, put target creature card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under its owner's control. Basically, Kenny is a Swiss Army Knight that does an absurd amount of things, and yeah, I mean, with four of them, your power stones can help make it a lot easier to activate those abilities. And of course, even if your opponents deal with your Great Worm, uh, yeah, you can just get it back out of your graveyard for very cheap. Again, if you've got those power stones in play, you just tap four of them. You pay a single black mana, get your Great Worm back out. Your opponents are not gonna be too happy about that. And yeah, you can draw a ton of cards. You can gain a lot of life. Sure, you can make creatures even bigger. Uh, it can't really help again with the triple and haste, but still, again, your power stones can be incredibly useful with a commander like this one. Next up, how about a commander that loves big creatures? And again, keep in mind, I mean, again, our, our Great Worm, and I've kind of like glossed over the fact that, you know, for six mana, it is still a seven, six with trample, so it's still a decently large creature that can get some damage out on top of, you know, again, providing a certain amount of power stones. A uh, mildly animal loves big creatures. Uh, pay three, red, green, white, tap, look at the top five cards of your library. You may put a creature card with power five or greater from among them on the battlefield. Put the rest of the bottom of your library in any order. Obviously, our Great Worm meets that requirement, and yeah, again, with this activation being, you know, three mana, you know, three generic mana out of this cost, we can utilize our Power Stones for that to essentially cut this cost in half for this commander. So, of course, we can activate the ability a lot more throughout the game, or just make it a lot easier to activate, and yeah, I mean, if we've got any other activated abilities on creatures, or, you know, artifacts, or whatnot, or we, you know, got our artifacts to cast too, we can utilize our Power Stones for those. Finally, yeah, how about a Friends Forever commander, you know, a, the very specific partner kind with Elmar, Ovenwald, Informant. Haste, whenever you cast your second spell each turn, untap target creature that investigate. And again, when you investigate, you create a clue token. It's an artifact that you don't have to pay two to sacrifice to draw a card. So yeah, clue tokens can work very well with these power stones because basically, again, the more and more power stones we get to play, the easier it's going to be for us to sacrifice our clues. And of course, depending on, you know, the partner friends forever commander that you choose to work with Elmar, yeah, those power stones might be able to help with those as well. But now this episode is coming to a close. It's time for me to give you my final thoughts on Sorinthian Great Worm. Yeah, again, when I first saw this card, I thought that the Reddit translation just had to be just a little off, okay? I mean, I just, I thought that it had to have just been missing, you know, 
a land you control enters the battlefield, but apparently not. Apparently, it's just whenever any land enters the battlefield, and obviously, in a multiplayer format like Commander, that is absurd. I mean, with one trip around the table, you know, uh, you know, at a minimum, not a minimum, because, you know, people miss land drops, yes. But uh, basically, at a base level, you're probably going to get, you know, four power stones from this, but obviously, they can go up an absurd amount, again, with any kind of a fetch land, even as simple as evolving wilds. You know, Mirror Landscape's going to get you three, essentially, with it coming into play, and you eventually sacrificing it for, you know, two more. Uh, you know, any kind of a ramp spell, any kind of a mass ramp spell. Yeah, these can be absurd ways to just make a ton of tokens throughout the game. And again, you can utilize those tokens for more than just, you know, casting artifact spells and, you know, activating abilities, which is already incredible and fantastic. But again, there's plenty of different ways that you can take advantage of either the number of artifacts they have in play or utilize them for tap effects, etc., etc., etc. So yeah, this card is pretty incredible, and there are certain commanders out there that can really make the most of it, and this can just be an absolutely oh, game-changing card in those decks. So yeah, definitely a card that I think commander players out there are going to be very excited about, and yeah, make sure you're staying tuned to this channel for even more exciting quick takes and spoilers coming up. And with that, the show is coming to a close, so it's my turn here from you. So in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts on this episode are, and as always, thanks again, and have a good one. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all of their support.